Hello, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today for this very timely topic. This is Kirsten Logan. I'm the training coordinator from COBA, and I'm so happy to be joined by Donnie Lamarand. I still might have screwed that up, Donnie. You'll have to correct me. Um, she's the owner of Rocky Mountain Biohazard and Kirsten Drake, the office manager, and we'll get rolling on their presentation in just a moment. Everyone who attends today should receive a follow-up email this afternoon. That's your proof of attendance. Please keep that for your records. You may want to whitelist the domains uh, logmein.com or go to meeting.com. And if you're watching this uh, on our YouTube channel later, we hope that you find the information useful, but please note that archived webinars may not be used towards COVA's Voluntary Victim Advocate Certification. Whereas if you're watching this webinar live and you decide you wanna use that, uh, you may. If you have any trouble receiving the follow-up email, you can go ahead and contact me. I'll put my contact info in the chat box in a minute. A couple of housekeeping items if folks haven't used GoToWebinar before. Uh, you'll see a chat box. And if you've got questions for Donnie or uh, Kirsten, go ahead and send me a message there. Um, and we'll kind of moderate those. Uh, when we were doing our sound check before, we were experiencing a tiny bit of uh, feedback, but we'll just do our very best. Um, and everyone is muted. If you have a question you feel like is too long to type, go ahead and send me, Kirsten Logan, a message, and I'll go ahead and unmute that for you. And um, with that, Dani and Kirsten, we are ready to go. Wonderful. Good morning, everybody, and thank you so much for being here today. Um, I do pray that this finds you healthy and happy and safe right now. Um, my name is Donnie, and I am the co-owner of Rocky Mountain Biohazard. My husband, Randall, and I um, run this very small family-run business, and uh, we're just so excited to be here today and uh, be able to hopefully help you guys out along the way during these um, uncertain times. Uh, Kirsten, you want to talk a little bit about yourself? Uh, my name is Kirsten, and I have um, been working here for not too long. I'm actually getting my master's right now in forensic science, and Donnie and Randall are sweet enough to let me come in and help them out, so I do as much as I can for them. And yeah, <laughs> <laughs> super, super smart, and we are just so lucky to have her on board. Um, she goes out on a lot of these scenes with us and uh, very compassionate and just excellent at what she does. So we're happy to have her here. And uh, obviously we want her to grow and do bigger, better things. But while we have her, man, we're gonna just soak her up. All right, so let's talk today about COVID-19 and then also our crime scene remediation and all the dangers that are present. So first and foremost, kind of a little bit about us and who we are. Um, we are a small family owned and operated company. Um, we strive to help people, you know, in our community that are going through very difficult times. You know, we're all very qualified and specialized in biohazard remediation. And we're constantly um, keeping up our education as new things are always arriving, such as coronavirus. And uh, we not only deal with, you know, infectious diseases, we do blood and bodily fluid, sewage backups, I mean, infestations, gross filth, and, and no, you guys have seen it all. So we are here to help out through these really yucky times. So a um, little more about us, let's see. Sorry, I've never done a webinar, so please bear with us. So we're figuring this all out as we go. Um, you know, a lot about what an infectious disease is. Kirsten, you wanna talk a little bit about that? Um, so an infectious disease is anything that's like coronavirus, C. diff, MRSA, hepatitis, HIV. Um, they're very easily transmitted to another person through bodily fluids and body secretions. Um, they're everywhere and it, they can live on surfaces for a very long time. Yeah, it's crazy, you know. Um, a lot of people reach out and they're like, oh my gosh, are you guys so scared and nervous about this COVID-19? And really when it comes down to it, um, we'll talk a little bit further. It, it is, you know, a little scary because it's uncertain times. And, you know, obviously we're all learning new things as we're going, but uh, we're finding it, it, it's not, it's scary, but it, it's 
you know, as long as we're doing the proper things to keep ourselves safe, I think we're all gonna make it through just fine. So we also wanna talk a little bit about, you know, not only infectious diseases, um, another thing a lot of you guys are gonna run into when you're going into homes on any of these scenes, there's also bloodborne pathogens and the dangers of these. So a really big one, you know, we have hepatitis C, you know, hepatitis B, HIV and MRSA. So if you're looking at the hepatitis C, it shows that it will stay alive outside of the body up to four days, hepatitis B, stays very much alive seven days outside the body. HIV, four weeks. MRSA can be months. C. diff is months. So just think about it this way. When you are out on a scene and there's any blood or bodily fluids around and say you wanted to be nice or a family member said, I wiped everything up, even though they wiped it up, that virus, that spore is still very much present and active. So anyone can still get very sick in these scenes, even though you may not see the blood or bodily fluids, it is still very much alive and can make us all sick. So just something to think about, you know, this uh, coronavirus, we're learning, you know, how long it survives on you know, paper and all this stuff. And we'll talk a little bit further about that, but just know, you know, everywhere we go and all things are going on, um, there's always a chance of getting hepatitis you know HIV, MRSA, C. diff, coronavirus, COVID, I mean you name it, um, it's out there and it's very real. So C. diff, um, I know we're not talking about the COVID right now, but C. diff is a very um, difficult spore um, to kill. This is really big in old folks homes or around the elderly people. A lot of times when they go into the hospitals, um, there's a good chance they can get C. diff and it happens in their tummy and it causes severe diarrhea within the home. Um, a lot of times they can reinfect themselves and they can even possibly die from this. So the reason why we're talking about C. diff is this is a non-enveloped virus. This is like one of the toughest, toughest viruses to kill. It is a spore and it's so hard to kill. And the reason why I'm talking about this is we do these types of cleanups regularly and we are able to get rid of this spore and make it safe for families to go back into their homes. So the reason why we're talking about this is because I want you to know that coronavirus is an enveloped virus, which is one of the easiest, um, you know, easiest to kill. It's crazy. So What's, what's crazy about it is how, you know, it's gone out of control, you know, with all these countries and places. And I believe it's because the incubation time is up to like 14 days. So any one of us could be sick and not know it. And we're feeling great. And we go to the grocery store and that's where we can have a good chance of spreading it. You know, we're feeling fantastic. You know, there's no cure vac vaccination for this yet. Um, we're all still very much trying to figure this out. And I think the biggest thing with this coronavirus is that we continue um, going by what the CDC and World Fourth Organization is suggesting, you know, always washing your hands, especially um, before you eat, you know, after you touch surfaces. I mean, just be super vigilant and don't touch your face. You know, the other day I was doing a, um, a Zoom meeting and I was so distracted. I was staring at myself <laughs> the whole time. And I noticed that I touched my face like a hundred times. And I guess no one really realizes how much you are you know, touching your face. So if there's any way of you know, being able to control that or slow it down, that would be huge. Um, you know, you could still spread the virus even though you don't show the symptoms. I mean, that's, that's kind of scary within itself. Uh, research has shown to be most contagious when symptoms are at their worst, and they can live on surfaces hours to days, depending on the surface type. You want to talk about this one real quick? Sure. Quick drink. So, depending on the surface, it can last longer on that surface, and that's just because of the porous material that it's made of. So, uh, the more porous the material, the longer it's going to last. So. Um, as you can see on the screen, there are different types of materials um, and how long they can last on that 
material, which is pretty crazy to think. We don't necessarily think about those things when we're doing our everyday lives. Um, I know that when we go in to go disinfect an area where somebody might have had the virus, you know, we think of anything that we might touch and that's what we clean. So um, most people wouldn't think of the side of a door, you know, but where do people knock on a door? Usually on the side of it or on the door itself and that can stay there for up to two days. So if it's still there and someone else touches it, they can get it. Yeah, you know, um, you don't think about it, but when you're at home, you know, all the knobs and switches that you're touching, you know, the stove, the microwave, I mean, you don't realize how many surfaces you're, you're touching on a regular basis. So one thing that we are doing um, for our community is we do a lot of services for the homeless shelters, um, lease departments, we're going in and we're doing infection control. So what we do is we go in and we wipe down all the surfaces. Um, we get rid of the biofilm. So any kind of, you know, just any dirt or debris that is present. And then we can go in and fog and make the, you know, the area safe again. Now, here's what can happen, even though we just cleaned the entire area. And if by chance, someone on the street comes walking into the shelter and they are sick, and they touched all the surfaces and coughed and sneezed, they've just reinfected the entire area they visited. So, you know, we don't really go in there and say that we are making the place safe. You know, it's really difficult to keep this under control. Um, so we really just call it infection control. Um, hey really guys, it's Kova Kirsten. Sorry to interrupt. I have a couple messages that there might be a little difficulty with audio. I wonder if you might just move back a couple inches from um, your computer where your mic is, and we'll try that. Thank you. Perfect. How is this sounding? Is this any better? To me, that's better. Uh, I'll keep an eye on the comments. Thanks so much. Please, please let us know. Let us know. Um, so we're doing everything we can just to keep our community safe. You know, we go in and we're just constantly wiping and cleaning and decontaminating and uh, just trying to do infection control. Sorry, guys. All right, the biggest way of transmission, you know, is everything we're hearing on TV, you know, coughing and sneezing um, through bodily fluids, by direct contact, you know, and touching contaminated surfaces. Now, there's this big conversation in regards to the face masks. I see it everywhere on social media. Some, so many people are poo-pooing it, like this is ridiculous. And other people are thinking it's fantastic, you know, I mean, my thought process is, is when we talk, you know, we have the droplets that go in the air. And what if we happen to be a carrier and we'd be doing the world, you know, justice by not spreading whatever we may possibly have. So all of us here at Rocky Mountain Biohazard, you know, we practice safe practices and common courtesy. So we like to wear our masks while we're out and about, um, you know, just anything to help, you know, especially for those who are like elderly or more likely to get sick by this. All right, so this is showing just if one person is sick, how many other people can get sick based off of what virus they have. So it shows a bunch of different ones that have been around for years. Um, for coronavirus, for every one person that gets sick, it can then infect two to three more people. And that's really the importance of social distancing right now is because if it can infect two to three other people, those two to three other people can then infect even more people and so on and so forth. And that's why this virus has been getting so bad. And it's also the fact that it's so easily transmitted through from one person to another. Um, you know, some viruses can only be transmitted through blood, um, where coronavirus can be transmitted through saliva and mucus and everything like that. So that's, um, it was just interesting to look at this and see how many people can actually be infected from this virus. And out of those two to three people, you know, not everybody may show the symptoms and then they can still transmit that to other people as well. Yeah, and I think that's where the face masks could come in handy, as silly as it may be, but um, it's, it's important, you know, anything to help um, slow the spread, um, we're certainly doing, you know, and we're practicing, you know, staying safer at home, you know, Big thing is, is we 
we try to stay home as much as we can, you know, limit our trips to the grocery store. And boy, I have two daughters and they are thrilled to go for a car ride. How sad is that? It's like having pet dogs. So just excited to go for a car ride. It's crazy. Um, some facts, you know, and myths. The big thing is, is this is changing on a daily basis. So this could very well change by the end of the day. Who knows? So right now, antibiotics are effective in treating the virus, which is a huge myth. Um, the virus can only affect people with poor health. That's a myth. Everybody is susceptible. And um, a face covering fully protects you from the virus. Another myth. You know, a fact, you know, antibiotics only work towards bacteria and not viruses. People of all ages can contract this virus. And this virus can still enter your body through touching your eyes, nose, or mouth. So wearing a mask when you're not affected is not always necessary, um, but it certainly helps. And wearing a face covering does not replace the need for social distancing. So that's going to be our safest, safest bet. Um, it's just trying to um, do the best we can for our community and uh, do our safe at home practice. Yeah, and they've also shown that research has been done where People think that when they wear a face mask, it's okay to get close to another person. Um, and so it is causing a lot of problems where if you don't have both, it's not going to work. So um, it takes two to tango for that. <laughs> All right, so for ways to keep safe, um, we've talked a lot about wearing masks. Um, you know, if you're ever feeling unwell, definitely. If you have the symptoms, definitely go get tested. Now they're offering testing for everybody, which is nice. And you can also, there are some places that will do antibody testing to see if you've ever had it in the past, which would be interesting to see. I know that Donnie and I would both like to do that because um, we could have had it and not even known. And that's really important. Um, the other thing, of course, is social distancing. So they say that six feet is the best social distancing, I would say, if you don't have to go out, don't go out. Um, you know, live as much as you can. So um, avoid touching your eyes, nose, and mouth um, because if you touch a if you touch a surface that has the virus and then you touch those open areas on your body, you know, that virus will then go into your system and then you get it. And then washing your hands frequently. Um, so you know, that's the best way to Clean your hands is to wash them. Of course, if you can't wash them, you know, use the hand sanitizer whenever possible, especially out on the scene. You know, you can't just go to a bathroom and wash your hands if you're in the middle of something. So yeah, it's it's pretty tough for you guys when you're out on a scene, you know, and and I know it's very um sensitive for you guys to go in and you wear a full PPE you don't want to freak the families out either you're trying to be as sensitive as you possibly can but now is a perfect opportunity to be wearing your masks and gloves and um, doing everything you can protect yourself and I, i'd say if you can do it i would highly recommend that all right so this graph shows um as of right now you know we've seen all over the news that the healthcare system just can't handle everything, you know, they're trying to do everything they can, they're trying to get ventilators, they're trying to get enough PPE. So this graph shows um, the yellow orange portion shows what would happen to the world if we didn't have any protective measures. So we didn't have social distancing, people that wear masks, you know, the number of cases would increase tremendously um, and it would surpass the capacity of the healthcare system. Where with those protective measures, the healthcare system can handle it. We have enough PPE, we have enough funding so that everything can be taken care of as it needs to be. Um, and as of right now, the world has about 5.7 million cases um, where there are also 350,000 deaths. And here in Colorado, we're a lot less. I think Colorado has been doing better in a sense compared to other states. Um, but we have about 24,000 cases and about 1,300 deaths. So definitely not the lowest, but definitely not the highest either. So. I think we're all trying to do our very best. 
um, with this. So, you know, and another little side note, we do a lot for, we'll say the homeless shelters. <clears throat> we've been doing this since March. And um, a little good news, we've only heard of two actual cases in our homeless shelters. So, you know, everyone's very panicked and very scared about this. And it, it's huge. You know, we're going to the Coliseum, we're dealing with these big, giant facilities. And so far, um, we're aware of two cases. So, you know, that's very positive. You know, it, it really um, enlightens us a little bit. It's good. But, we're still very much fully protected and doing our due diligence to do everything right, you know, to ensure not to, you know, spread this virus. <laughs> so, you know, there's the do's and don'ts and keep in mind, this is constantly changing on a day-to-day -day basis. You know, obviously you're gonna wanna observe good um, personal hygiene. I mean, that's a given. And, and you really wanna do that for your family that's home with you. I mean, unless you really wanna social distance yourself. <laughs> Um, you know, educate yourself on the symptoms. I mean, if you're feeling sick, um, definitely look into it, but don't, don't scare yourself, you know, because you're going to find that you look on the web, you're going to have cancer and who knows what else, you know, with your fever. So just, just do your due diligence and, and do clean and disinfect frequently, um, you know, and, you know, on the don'ts, it says don't wear a face mask if you aren't sick. That's different now. So yes, please wear a face mask to help you know, keep the spread and, you know, anything helps. Don't touch your face and eyes and, and do not go in the crowded places if you can. If you can avoid it, that would be great. And let's just see how all the other states are doing now that they're introducing everyone getting back together because I fear that we're going to get another, you know, round of um, cases. So we're just kind of sitting back and seeing what's going on and doing what's best for our families. So of course here we talk around biohazard. I mean, all of us are in close proximity to each other. You know, if one of us gets sick, we're all gonna get sick. And that's just it, unfortunately, it's just the way of the job. So um, we do have to take extra cautious measures in order to ensure that we're not getting sick, especially since we are in an area where there is coronavirus. You know, with Donnie and I last last week, we went to the homeless shelter and we did clean up that coronavirus case and we had to be extra cautious when we got home. Um, so, you know, washing your hands for a minimum of 20 seconds with soap and water. Um, when we were out on the job, that wasn't necessarily something that we could do. So we used hand sanitizer. And um, we also used the disinfectant that we used. We ensured we wiped the door handles that we touched. We um, wiped the steering wheel, you know, inside of the car, everything. Um, and then we also, do practice social distancing as much as we can. Um, we don't really like to have people in close proximity to each other, whether it's on a job or at home. Um, and we only want one person to go outside and do an errand that needs to be done. So if we need to go to the store, you know, I will ask Donnie, hey, I'm going to the store. Do you need us to pick up anything? And she does the same thing for my family and I, and so that's really helpful. That way we can limit the exposure to outside. Um, we both disinfect our homes daily. I know my mom is going crazy with <laughs> disinfecting and I'm sure Donnie is as well. Um, making sure that surfaces are clean and you know, if something touches them that may have been contaminated, clean it again, you know. Um, and then Donnie takes daily vitamins too. Oh yes. <laughs> we do so much here at our home, you know, and not only are we cleaning daily, it's because we have kids. Holy cow. They're messy. They're so messy. It's, it's terrible. So, um, you know, I do take my daily vitamins. I do take a lot of time to rest and drink lots of water. And, and, and it's a really good time not to panic. You know, all you can do is just um, be brave and just keep doing and be a really great example for our kids. You know, if we're scared, then they're going to be scared. So, um, we're doing everything we can in our abilities to stay positive and just do the right things. And that's a big deal. You know, initially when I was very um, nervous and scared about the virus, um, when my husband would come home from work, I would make him get undressed in the um, garage and I would have clean clothes for him or make him jump in the shower right away. Um, that was a big deal for me. And, uh, you know, I tell our employees to do that. We never wear our shoes in the house. We always take our shoes off before walking into the house. 
And we've always practiced that. And not only because of COVID, but we do it for all the other um, biohazards that are out there. You know, even though we're doing everything right on the scene, we just, it doesn't hurt to be extra cautious. So this is COVID, Kirsten. Can I ask a question? Um, you talked, you were talking a little bit about um, shelters specifically, you know, homeless and or perhaps domestic violence shelters. And uh, I'm sorry if you answered this because I was attending for a moment to some of the questions, but um, are, you know, what's your advice for folks about how often they might need to be cleaning those? Because I think you mentioned you can do a full disinfect and then if someone comes in and, and sneezes, you know, you're kind of back to square zero. So how are you advising your clients on, you know, are you going to places weekly or only if they know someone is, is ill and they're kind of doing DIY? Perfect. That is a fantastic question. So um, we have many contracts, um, one specifically here in um, the Denver area. Um, you know, we get called out for any kind of, you know, if someone had an accident or threw up or blood or anything like that. I mean, we're out there two, three times a day. And these types of cleanups could be as easy as just a quick little wipe down in the bathroom. I mean, we're in and out within 15 minutes. So what we are doing is we go above and beyond and we wipe down all high touch surfaces. So something that would normally take us 15 minutes, we're gonna spend maybe 40, 45 minutes there and we're gonna wipe down um, you know, the, the handrails, the door handles, the desktops. We're just going um, a little above and beyond to try to keep um, this under control. And a big deal is, so to answer you, we're doing this daily. And in between us going out there, the staff at these shelters are also wiping down the areas and being very diligent with their cleaning. Um, I don't think they're being incredibly excessive, but they're just doing the right thing and wiping everything down. And um, I'm incredibly impressed. Like I said, these are huge facilities and we've only had two cases of known cases. So um, they're doing it right. Um, we have another one that we're dealing with that's up in, uh, say, Fort Collins. We go there every single morning and do a quick wipe down and just make sure everything's good. Um, wipe down the common areas, you know, the bathrooms, the kitchen, door handles. Uh, it, it's very easy. And you guys can all do this yourself. Um, you know, as long as you have the right disinfectant and you're following, you know, what the label says, you're going to be just fine. Just um, stay on top of it and keep washing your hands and not touching your face and wiping down. I think we're going to be okay. I hope that answers your question. Yeah, and I think another really important thing about the shelters that we do go to is that the employees there, they're making sure that everybody who is there is also following the social distancing and making sure they are wearing masks and making sure they're washing their hands. You know, they're, they have to stay on top of everybody who's there in order to keep the problem down. Yeah, making sure they're not sick. And if they are sick, they quarantine them immediately. They put them in another area and they watch them and test them. And um, generally they're just got a, a common cold, you know, which is very lucky. We've been doing the right thing. Um, a really good thing, you know, for downtime and keeping you guys healthy, you know, arts and crafts. I don't know if you guys are having downtime or if you're out there and still needing to go out on scene, but uh, do things that make your heart happy too. You know, arts and crafts, um, cooking and baking. My goodness, I have a 13-year-old daughter and she is cooking and baking and she is a hot mess. And there we go back to cleaning on a regular basis. Messy, messy girl. You know, and meditating and really going back to, you know, what you're all about and um, getting out there and helping others and doing the right thing. So, you know, we pray every night um, that we're helping others in the greatest time of need and pray that they find us and we're able to uh, make a difference in our community. So many good things. So just stay positive. That's the biggest thing. So on this screen, um, I've attached just some easy things that you can do at home. Um, you know, you can make a mask for you or others if you want to. Out of make sure that it's 100% cotton fabric. That was a huge thing that a lot of people have. They've made masks out of everything, but the 100% cotton fabric has shown to be the best. Um, I used to live in Scotland and I had a lot of downtime before I started making friends and I did this thing called diamond dots and it's pretty much making art, like painting, num painting with numbers, but instead of painting, you use these jewels and they're very relaxing and they take up a lot of time. So it's a good way to get through the day. 
Um, I've also attached some recipes um, for chocolate chip cookies. Everybody loves chocolate chip cookies. Um, if you're keto, I attached a delicious keto cheesecake. It is, I don't even like cheesecake. It's the best cheesecake I've ever had. Um, and you know, gardening, like we, in our neighborhood, we see people out daily gardening and that's definitely a way to get through the day and to be out in the sunshine. You know, we've had really good weather. Yeah, or um, sit out in the back and have a glass of wine and enjoy some sunshine, you know, just take care of yourself. Oh, here's a big one. Why choose a professional company for you know, disinfecting? This is a big deal. So when you're out and you're with the families and say there's domestic violence or um, unfortunately someone may have died by suicide, it is so important for you guys to choose a professional company. Um, if it's not us, please make sure it is a professional company because we really know what we're doing. Um, we have extensive training in this type of cleanups. Um, we utilize proper chemicals, you know, which ensures that we are killing any of the bloodborne pathogens or infectious diseases. You know, like we said earlier, a family member may wipe everything down with some bleach, but hepatitis can survive that and continue to live. And then if the family has a baby who's crawling around on that flooring, um, as we all know, babies put their hands in their mouth, you know, and you can get them sick. It's a big deal. Um, you know, hepatitis C, I don't know if you guys know, but so many people carry it and have no idea they have it. You know, a lot of families think, you know, my, my family member's not sick, I can clean this up, but you know, they very well could be. And you always have to assume when you go on a scene that there is a bloodborne pathogen or infectious disease, just always assume the worst and that's how you're gonna keep yourself safe. It's a big deal. Uh, we also carry, you know, insurance and liability, you know? So if someone gets sick later on down the road, they can't turn around and sue the landlord or sue the family. Um, we take that away from everybody. You know, we make sure the job is done correctly. You know, here's a really great example. A lot of times you may go into a house and, and I hear this quite often when we get calls from the victim advocates um, that it's just a really small spot on the carpet. I mean, maybe the size of a quart or a blood. It's not a big deal. Um, can the family clean it up? So the answer is no. So if you're spilling, say, your milk or water on the carpet, it's going to only make a little tiny circle. But really, what is underneath that carpet or flooring is like two gallons of bodily fluid. And as you guys are all walking through the scene, you're, you're pushing those fluids further into the flooring, even possibly into the HVAC system. So if you hired, say, a um, carpet cleaner, not a professional company for doing bloodborne pathogens, they'll come in and get rid of that little itty bitty spot. But what they don't know is what's underneath. And if it's not cleaned properly, you're gonna get very sick and horrendous odors may permeate within time. So just get it done properly. Um, another big thing is we work with insurance companies. You know what most people don't realize is when there is a loss within a home, you know, blood, bodily fluids, sometimes infectious disease, insurance companies will pay for our services to come in, make that home safe. And if we have to take the carpet, insurance will replace that and they pay for our services. And the family, you know, you don't want them worrying about this and get further, um, you know, distraught having to clean up after a loved one. So please always allow a professional company to help out. So, you know, biohazard remediation and infectious disease, you know, the cleanup of any blood, bodily fluids, or OPIM. OPIM is actually um, the bits and pieces that are left behind. Um, you know, like I said earlier, homeowners insurance, um, they cover our services in most cases. And for some odd reason, if there is no homeowners insurance, or say it's an apartment, we will always, always work with the family. We never ask for money on the scene. We hold tight until the dust settles because we realize that the family is going through so much and uh, we're there to hold their hand through this process. Um, unlike a lot of these families, we have had this type of loss within our own family. So we have a lot of empathy and compassion and we realize what they're going through and we're gonna do anything we can um, to make it a little bit easier for them. I mean, we know it's a horrible time in their life, 
and um, in, in all honesty, we'll do anything to help them out. I mean, if that means getting them dinner, getting them a hotel room, mowing their lawn, um, we've done it all. Ah, PPE, personal protective equipment. Um, this is a big thing right now, especially you know on the news, the lack of personal protection equipment. Um, thank God we're in this line of business and, and we're prepared for this, but I know a lot of you guys are not. Um, you know, when we go on scene, we wear a biohazard suit and gloves and booties and our face coverings. Um, a big thing for you guys to know, when we go on scene, um, we usually suit up within the home. We're not here to um, put on a show for the neighbors to see. We're very discreet. And uh, we certainly don't want to dress like this in front of the family members because we don't want to further traumatize them. Now, for you guys, if you can wear your mask, even if it's a, a homemade mask, and some gloves. I mean, that would be phenomenal um, while you're on the scene to help protect yourself. So just like we were saying a little bit earlier, you know, wear your mask um, and don't touch, you know, don't try not to touch items. Do not clean up anything, please. I know you guys have the biggest hearts and you want to do the best you can for these families, but please protect yourself and your families and don't touch anything. Um, another really big thing to think about is if there happens to be blood on the floor, um, don't, you know, obviously don't walk through it or anything, but um, our biggest fear is dried blood because that can get airborne. We can breathe that in, get in our eyes, nose, mouth, and this is one really big way that we can get sick. So please, um, this is where it's really good for you to wear your mask and protect yourself. You know, why choose us, you know, because uh, we are proud sponsors of COVA. We are there every year and we pray that we get to see you this year. Come and visit us and we'll love up on you. Um, we certainly have experienced these types of losses and you know, we understand what these families are going through. We're very discreet. Um, we always show up in a white box van. Um, we certainly don't have, you know, the big words on the side of our truck saying, you know, suicide cleanup or, um, I mean, we just, just really try to put ourselves in the family's shoes. And that is certainly something we would not want on our driveway. So we don't talk to the neighbors. No one needs to know a thing about what we're doing on site. Um, the second you call us, we leave immediately. So however long it takes for us to get on site, we are there. And in most cases, it's within the hour. Um, we will go any hour, three in the morning, two in the afternoon, it doesn't matter. It is very important for us to make sure that that family is taken care of. And the biggest thing is we truly run our company with a high sense of faith, integrity, passion. We truly put ourselves into you know, your shoes and um, we, we treat these victims as if they're our own family and do our very best by them. And um, like we said, we will always go above and beyond to make the situation a little bit easier. Okay, Kirsten, we talk about this one. <laughs> All right, so this is just a little quiz that we have put together. Um, it's just, most of them are common sense questions that I'm sure will be super easy for you. Um, but what we have done is, if you wanna take the quiz and you wanna enter in your email, you can. Um, and when you enter your email, we'll enter you into a drawing for a prize. Um, and then once we draw, we'll I'll let you know and we will send you whatever we choose. So it's a fun quiz that you can do on your own time. Just trying to keep it light and interesting, if you will. And from our family to yours, please stay safe, healthy, and calm. And know that you're not in this alone. Um, our phones are always on if you need anything. Um, no questions too small or too big. Um, we are certainly here to help. Um, any hour, please know we're here to help you. Awesome, and I love the quiz interactivity. I think um, I'm probably not the only one who is sort of feeling death by webinar, um, even though I'm myself conducting a lot of webinars, so that's pretty cool. And um, looks like we have uh, some questions, so hang on a second, let me get to those. Oh, I have somebody asking, can, you, can we add the link um, here in the chat box for the quiz? Uh, let me think on that for a second. I also neglected to mention at the beginning that you can download two handouts, a brochure for victim advocates, as well as this PowerPoint. Um, 
from your handouts box. So yeah, let me see on my screen if I'm able to to grab that. Yeah, we're trying. <laughs> to get it to get it into your chat box. Yeah. We'll figure it out. All right, let's see what other questions folks have. Thank you. I can go back to the screen as well. Um, I'll let you guys click on it because it is sharing. I don't know what it is in the PowerPoint that you can download. Okay. Yeah, I've got the PowerPoint too. So, um, you know, anybody, if, probably the simplest thing rather than trying to mess around with it on my screen is if anybody wants that, go ahead and send me an email um, later this, a um, little later on this afternoon. All right, we'll give folks another minute to type in uh, any other questions they've got. Perfect. And we're here to help right. on any level. You know, um, I get random phone calls on yeah, that can help us out with uh, a door that was kicked in. Would you guys know anybody? Or, I mean, we, we get all sorts of calls. Or what do I do if I have a dog that has blood on him? What do I do? I mean, so please reach out. You can call, text, email any questions but we're happy to help any way we can yeah i bet you guys are the experts on that you know i'm now that i'm wearing a mask i'm realizing my hygiene around putting it on and taking it off probably isn't always um great you know and not touching the outside there's just uh, a lot to think about and i am on my second at home bang trim so i will second you about i didn't realize that i touched my face you know it's apparently my main hobby <laughs> Yeah, you're going to notice it a lot more when you go out as well, you know. Um, Donnie's daughter and I, we had to go to Costco one day, and of course, you have to wear masks at Costco nowadays, and um, we were walking through and see how many people were touching their face even with their mask on. You know, you notice it even more now. You shouldn't do it. <laughs> or my favorite, so, people wear underwear for masks <laughs> or like a <laughs> Here's an interesting question um, at talking about, you know, who's actually responding victim advocate wise on scene. Um, the question is wondering if COVA is recommending phone call only for the time being, you know, should advocates or are advocates responding? Um, COVA hasn't made an official recommendation, but thank you for the question. On the last law enforcement coordinators meeting, a phone call that we had was um, earlier this month. and it definitely varied at that point in time according to where folks were in the state. In the state, so Weld County was having a big outbreak, you know, at that time in their elder care facilities, and the Denver metro area, uh, pretty much exclusively, uh, everyone was letting us know that they were uh, only doing phone calls, or maybe 90% phone calls, you know, except for it, it, where it was a scene where an advocate was really needed in person. I think everyone kind of hates that and is, you know, champing at the bit to get back to interacting with people in person. But our friends over on the Western Slope, um, you know, were, were able to respond in person still. And I'd be, you know, interested to hear from our folks on the line, you know, if you were only responding by phone, or have you now gone back to in person as especially some counties of smaller populations and smaller case numbers have been able to get variances. Um, so we'll give folks a minute to uh, type in their thoughts and let us know what they're doing with that. Yeah, that's certainly a tough call because you really want to be there um, to help the victims. I understand the dilemma with that. You know, and another, and, you have victims that are not capable of making the phone call or, you know, be able to you know, FaceTime. I mean, how does that work? Right. Um, and with you all, it looks some folks are writing in, which is great. But um, for you all at Rocky Mountain Biohazard, are you aware if there were some folks who had previously been doing phone call only, but now they're getting back out on scene, or have you seen it remain pretty consistent? Um, it's been, you know, uh, it's been pretty darn quiet for us right now. I, I think a lot of these things are, um, people are still trying to figure it all out, if you will. Um, we get called out and victims advocates aren't typically there. So I'm not sure how they're um, responding with everybody. That's fair. Let me read some of the responses that we have. Um, Andy from Fort Collins, thank you. Uh, he says we're currently responding on the phone, though that's expected to loosen a little bit in the next few weeks. 
um, Tracy from Mesa County. Mesa County SO is and always has been responding on scene. Um, Craig from Greeley. Uh, Monday, we just started back in-person responses. We had 34 cases from Friday to Monday. Um, oh no, excuse me, I'm sorry, that's two responses. Monday starting back. Um, uh, Susan, we had 34 cases from Friday to Monday over the holiday weekend. Yeah, some friends of mine in law enforcement have talked about how the cases that they are starting to see are sort of um, over the top cruelty wise, you know, like a maybe kind of the dam has, has broken as people whose relationships may have been, you know, tenuous but not violent, for example, and they've now been, you know, stuck in the house together for two months. Um, yeah, well, thank you, Susan, for um, that's that's a lot of cases. And I mean, thank goodness you all are there for victims. Um, Sue from Broomfield, we we're responding to officers on scene to drop off info packets and get information from them so we can call the victims. Drew and Westy, um, not yet cleared to go on scene and will not return to the office until July 1. So just phone call, follow, phone call follow up after a death. Wendy from the 5th Judicial District, a little bit of both, mostly phone and Zoom, but we're starting to have more in person. Laura from Parker Lone Tree, um, still responding by phone calls. Um, Andrea, Littleton PD responding in certain circumstances only. If a victim has no support on scene or officers determine that someone is unable to manage phone contact, we will respond. Uh, thank you all. I think that's super helpful for us to kind of start to know what our colleagues in the field are doing. You know, on a side note, you know, just off the cuff, we'd be happy to help out. Um, if you guys are running into an instance where you need to go out and you have to go out there and you're uncomfortable, um, and I don't know if this could even factor in in any way, but you can utilize us too. You know, we would come out and help out. We can decontaminate and then you can meet up with them if you'd like. I mean, we wouldn't charge for that, obviously, because we want to keep you guys safe. So I don't even know how that would work, but it's something I'd be happy to offer and um, anything we can do to help make it a little bit easier and a little less scary for you guys. Awesome. That's one of the things I um, love about this field is how willing everyone is to work together on behalf of crime victims. Um, so we'll hang out a, a minute more and let folks type any questions or comments. Meantime, oops, excuse me. Uh, meantime, I am going to pop back over to my screen and just show you guys a couple of things on the COBA website in case is, anyone is not aware of the statewide training calendar. or at least make a solid attempt to. <laughs> okay, so I know a lot of folks are familiar with COVID's training calendar and the resources we have on our website, but um, just want to um, show you guys a couple of things. Um, I kind of like to tease that our website, I think, might be the original one that was ever ever made. So if you're used to navigating newer ones, it's not always totally intuitive. But if you come here on coloradocrimevictims.org and down to trainings and events and over to the training calendar, you'll see everything that I or we are hosting in addition to the statewide training calendar that, that folks can post on or anyone can send me their trainings if they would like anyone in the state to be available to them. Um, so yeah, death by webinar at the moment, but um, you'll see many of the upcoming things here. Um, and the other thing I would like to show you all is here right under that, if you come to our archived webinars, um, that will take you to a YouTube page uh, with many archived webinars that I hope might be of assistance to you. And with that, let me look, attend to a couple other questions. And we have a question from the Western Slope uh, for you all at Rocky Mountain Bio Biohazard. Are you front range only? No, we will uh, access all of Colorado. Um, no stresses. However, it will take us a minute to get there, but um, we will certainly get out there and do anything we can do to help out. Awesome. Thank you. 
Okay. Well, that looks like the conclusion of our questions. Uh, Donnie and, and uh, Kirsten, I want to thank you so much. Um, if anyone has any difficulty downloading the handouts or has any other questions um, and you weren't able to grab their contact info, you can definitely reach them through me. Um, and I hope that everyone has a fantastic rest of your week. Thank you. Thank you very much for having us. We absolutely enjoy working with you. And please feel free to reach out if we can assist in any way. And stay calm and stay safe. All right. Thanks, everyone. Um, Raina, I see your question. I will send you a message offline. Thanks. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.